Does it work? All right, I think it I think it worked. I think I can. I think I can. Check one, two. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Torn Tuesday. This is your weekly dose of all things Lord of the Rings, gossip, news, reviews, and wonderful panels of fans and talented folk. Uh, just checking the chat here. I see uh, Facebook. I see YouTube. I see Twitch. I see X, formerly Twitter. I see TD Matthew and Susan and Robin. Uh, I see last one. I see some familiar names from our Discord. Uh, we have a very special show as we do every March. Uh, that last week we introduced to middle earth march madness this week we continue with middle earth march madness we are in the sweet 16 bracket we've got a we've got uh all the winners from uh the last two rounds to announce and we have a panel of torn staffers and fans to debate on wh who you should vote for i just realized i left my door open there um Robin says, is there somewhere we can vote on the Discord as well as the website? Because it says untrustworthy for some reason. That's an interesting comic. Thank you, Robin, for pointing that out. We should check our security certificates. The One Ring Diet is a safe place. We don't have any ads. We don't have any trackers. We're not doing all that crazy uh, uh, tracking stuff. Um and and we don't have any ads and and there's no there's no money to be made uh so i don't know why security certificates would be flagging the one ring.net but there should be a link in the description uh i posted there i see k says hiya justin um so i see the facebook chat now wonderful wonderful team of people before i bring them in as you know, Torn Tuesday has been coming to you live for uh, over 12 years now, bringing you the weekly news and gossip. So before we get into the Sweet 16, we just have some big news over the last week. And to help bring it to you is the man himself, Clifford Scott Broadway mm. Esquire. Hello, everybody. How are you doing there? Oh, my goodness gracious. Excuse me, I'm enjoying a lavender mint. Have you ever had these? These violet, these Choward's violet mints? They're delicious. And welcome, everybody, to the OneRing.net. We're going to get into the Sweet 16 on our voting bracket very soon. Justin, I am delighted to see you. And welcome, everybody. It's I can see so many people here. I see Kay in the Facebook chat and... TD Matthew. Yeah, and we shouted out a bunch of people. Everyone's here. Uh, it's, it's so lovely. I, I, th I think we should, yes, uh, you Cliff, you should tell everybody where people can find you this weekend, right? This coming weekend. Well, as well as we have a, a surprise that happened to us in the world of online fandom. I'll mention that in a second. But WonderCon is upon us. It is an amazing Easter weekend. And that means everybody in Southern California can gather at the Anaheim Convention Center for the WonderCon, the sister organization from San Diego Comic-Con has an equally big show with lots of stars, fans, getting to do cosplay. The Artist's Alley is great, really great Artist's Alley. And at the top of that list, fans went to go and see panel presentations, really good panel presentations. 
come to us Easter Sunday in room 200 North. Isn't that right? It's room 200 A in the North building. We will get, we're going to have a 1230 to 130 PM. Panel 12, 1230, 1215. Just call it, keep it noon o'clock. It's noonish. It's the noon o'clock. But you can find it on the on the guide. You can even download the WonderCon app. It's really cool. And get all your information there. But come and join us, everybody, on Easter Sunday. And yes, happy Holy Week to you, TD Matthew. It's going to be so cool. We're going to talk about the War of the Rohirrim and other news and updates that we have in the world of Tolkien fandom. And especially interesting... Aside from inviting everyone to come and join us, and hopefully, if there's good gathering of Lord of the Rings and Tolkien fantasy cosplayers, we can get some group photos together outside at the Fountain, a very popular place at Anaheim WonderCon for great cosplayers. Everybody knows it. It's part of our Southern California culture to go down there and show off your best cosplay, especially at the end of the weekend. You know, it's right outside where the food carts are. But so we encourage we cosplay further, on Sunday at noon. Mm -hmm. Come to our panel, room it. North 200A. And then after our panel, we'll find a place. Maybe it's like just right outside. There's a fountain right there. Mm -hmm. We want to get all the cosplayers together and, and take a nice group photo. And we have so much to, to give you uh, that we can't <laughs> tell you on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will be a nice little private chat. Our panel mm. will be a nice little private chat among us fans. The I'll other I'll Lord of the Rings thing that I think you should check out while you're at WonderCon is a oh. rare, rare con appearance by friend of Clifford Broadway, uh, Tolkien artist Colleen oh, yes. Doran. Yes, Colleen Doran. Please forgive me, Colleen. I love you so much. She's been such a dear friend and a sweetheart and a friend to the OneRing.net community for decades. And... You're right to remind me, Justin. I'm so glad you mentioned it. Um, I've got my mind dwelling on um, something else that we just saw on Twitter yesterday. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. But Eisner, award-winning artist, and I mean a superior brand of artist. She is Colleen Doran, huge Tolkien nerd. She loves Lord of the Rings and Tolkien as much as we do. Yeah, I hear you, Kat. And, and she's so can everybody else. keeping busy <laughs> working with Neil Gaiman for the last oh, five to ten, or fifteen or twenty years. Very so closely I'd say, with Neil. You know, if you like Neil Gaiman, if you like Lord of the Rings, she is one of the top you know, artists. Hard, and uh, so look for fans. her in Artist Alley. Indeed, uh, so we have so alley. much news to talk about before we jump can I, into. Can I hit the big one? Can I do the big one? After oh, yeah. months and months and months of silence. We suddenly saw the reawakening on Tolkien Reading Day. It was the reawakening of Prime Video's uh, Rings of Power Twitter account. They actually tweeted something. It's like, yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, after all this waiting for such a, such a long, long time, it was fascinating to see the level of specificity that they brought up in this tweet. Did you notice, Justin, how they're really specifically going in for conversations about the dwarves and their rings? And yeah, there's there's some big signals coming from this uh, tweet. Uh, just really cool stuff. So the the the, the first uh, the first public anything from Prime Studios was mm -hmm. finally published on Tolkien Reading Day after nearly two years. I should say a year and a half of yeah. complete radio silence uh, yeah. across everything. Um, they decided to come out of their cave for. Uh, Tolkien reading day and they posted uh, three clips but he, Cliff you know who else came out of uh, Tol uh, for Tolkien reading day something everybody is looking forward to Pro is, probably I won't I won't just say probably more so than season it. two of Rings of Power because you if know, you look that, at the bottom there you see how, see how many likes that got from Rings of Power on Prime the billion yeah, dollar yeah. show got two, 200 2.5 K likes. Well, guess yeah. who awoken as well? In a hole uh, ground, yes. there lived a hobbit from Tales of the Shire. The Tales upcoming the Shire cozy video game uh, yes. released their first in game footage. It is just this tiny little seven second looping gift, but it's so mm -hmm. cozy, so it wonderful. So nice. And let's take yeah. a look at the likes. 
8.4 likes. It got four times the amount of love that Amazon's Rings of Power did in their big tweet. We're looking forward to Tales of the Shire. In fact, oh, yeah. I have it on good authority that mm. you will know more about Tales of the Shire probably in the next 10 days, maybe seven days, sometime mm. soon. I cannot Something's say anything coming. more, but Tales of the Shire is about to get you excited for living like hobbits. That's all I, that's all I can say right now. Um, the other thing that was announced yesterday, Cliff, is yeah. the return of Haladriel. The music, the extraordinary CD collection that Bear McCreary was talking about, that's exciting. It's gorgeous. Look at, you know, look at that. The, this massive multiple CD collection, which includes, and if I'm not mistaken, a complete, a, a holistically comprehensive every bit of music from season one of the rings of power not only that uh this uh eight cd collection i believe let's take a mm -hmm. look at the uh, uh lord of the, uh, the amazon listing 10, 10 cd CDs. box set wow. uh includes uh 10 cds includes this beautiful haladriel artwork and we do with this is basically a confirmation that haladriel is real and it's intended and this box set also includes extended edition uh versions of all of bear mccreary's blog posts from his website so f you could learn more wow. about his creative process uh and uh it had just you know what in the last hour it just got listed on amazon oh this wasn't live this wasn't oh. live an hour ago okay it wasn't live now. whoa oh now. gosh here we go uh, click it's now a, it's a hundred it's 150 dollars it comes out in a month, and uh, pre you can pre-order it now at Amazon.com. Just search for, there you go, LOTR Rings of Power box set. Uh, wow. It's 150 bucks. Uh, it sold out on Mondo.com yesterday. It sold out yesterday. So this is a second restocking of it on Amazon.com. If you love the music of Rings of Power... And you oh, and love we do. Bear McCreary's you know we contribution do. to the legend so of Middle Earth. Uh, so good. This is it, and I promise yeah. you, this will sell out. This w it did sell out yesterday, and it will sell out again. Uh, curiously, uh, oh, what just happened? Uh, curiously, um, I love he had this. A, uh, he had a very different on image Amazon. on his Instagram, actually. He had a different so, image on his Instagram that showed all the discs. yeah. There's there's different different yeah. ima images all around. So uh, again, that's on Amazon.com right now. LOTR oh, cool. Rings of Power box set, ten CD, and this oh, is cool. the official link that they gave. So just find it on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, other big news before we jump into Middle Earth March Madness. Happy birthday, Lee Pace, forty five years old, <laughs> uh, looking wow. healthier than ever. I am I'll in the say. middle of catching up on on what what's the TV show? Salvation? No. Yeah. Inception? No. No. What's the name of the show? Chat room, um, help me out. The science fiction uh, series that he's on right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't. But <laughs> I am ready for Thranduil to have another adventure jim wart thank you so much it's foundation it's foundation. foundation thank you um yes and uh lee pace is is looking better than ever and That's right. uh, i believe That's this right. is fan art of him right here but happy birthday to lee pace and you know if warner brothers is watching and you guys are considering future movies <laughs> i'm all in on lee pace i'm all in on thranduil you can he can play a prequel he can play a sequel. I I am I, you know elves are ageless, so like yep. Lee Pace can play a younger Thranduil. I can tell you that. Also, Do you remember, happy birthday, uh, Joseph oh. Mall. Joseph Mall had a birthday also, this week as well. And also, was, his birthday as well. That's great. He was probably up there with Bear McCreary as the best part of season one, of Rings of Power. Uh, he 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 made huge huge waves in the fandom uh he really was his character his portrayal the the writing yes. of the character um yep. brought so much tolkien into that show and we're we're, we're we're sad to see him depart the show and they've recast it for season two but uh joseph mall you you established adar 
in a wonderful, wonderful uh, I'll say. place. And I you know who been... else? Happy Another happy birthday shout out to my own dad. Hey, dad. Happy birthday. Hi, dad. Yeah. Um, and it's then my dad's uh, birthday tonight. It's funny. And then just a quick, quick update on more Lord of the Rings stuff. Uh, they're still in the process of recording the soundtrack to War of the Rohirrim, and Stephen oh. Gallagher is the composer, the credited composer to War of the Rohirrim, a brand new feature film animated in Japan. It's an anime feature film of Lord of the Rings: War of the Rohirrim, based on Helm Hammerhand, coming out this December. So they are currently in the middle of recording the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, if you remember, a few weeks ago, we reported on the horns and strings that they were recording. Well, the strings they recorded in New Zealand, and now they're recording the horns. And he's posting all these photos. Look at this. Uh, I love it. When, it's so great when Stephen does this to show us all these cool little things that are going on. That's really cool. Really good. And yeah, so uh, bass, trombone, trombone, trumpet. Uh, uh, this week he recorded, on the 13th of March, he recorded the Tycho drums. I think we talked about that uh, a week or two ago. And uh, uh, today he posted, awesome. beaming in from Mexico via remote session, Karen Bentley Pollock playing the beautiful Hardinger. This, oh, or, beautiful. Um, I might be wow. saying it wrong, Hardanger. Um, the Hardinger violin uh is a a a hard instrument to master as most violins are uh karen bentley pollock is one of the foremost uh experts in with this instrument lord of the rings is lucky to have her and according to last win in our discord this is the instrument that is famous for creating the sound of rohan Mm mm-hmm the sound, you know, the Eowyn's mm. theme, you know, when, when you see those establishing shots of Rohan and you and you hear the, 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 the music, we're not going to play it because copyright, do, 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 the, you know, mm. that single violin, <laughs> that's that what this close. is. <laughs> this, this violin is, this Hardinger is yeah. the same instrument. So this, they got the best in the world. They're remotely recording her from Mexico. To bring back the core the themes, familiar, and the core beautiful themes that Howard. Sh- so Howard Shore's themes will be somehow incorporated into the interesting new work that Stephen Gallagher is currently working on. You guys, that's all something to be excited about. All this stuff from Bear McCreary and online, uh, all these online insights that we get from Stephen Gallagher is really delightful. It's one of the best parts about being active in this fandom is that these creative musicians are sharing so much with us. It's really a great part of this. I love it. it the, I you really know, the War it. of the Rohirrim uh, project has has been the most open we've seen any Lord of the Rings project, whether video game, mobile app, uh, 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 or anything yeah, else. It's been wonderful to see, see the development of uh, War of the Rohirrim, and uh, we continue to uh, uh, to try to get any nibble of it. And of course, the, our Discord is so active, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Robin is in there, and Last One is in there, and so many people are in there sharing what every one of these musical uh, posts mean, and the implications of this. To the overall movie, so we're really excited. And then one final thing, he just posted this. Oh, Stephen nice. Gallagher is at Air Studios, Air Studios in London. Uh, someone and then one in his questions, he says, "How long are you there for, Steve?" And Stephen says, uh, "Back at the end of the month." So it looks like they're going to be recording the soundtrack in mm. bits and bobs and instrumental pieces, one at a time. Um, but. You usually use Air Studios if you want to have a full orchestra. It's a giant mm. studio. The Air Studios, this this room right here, is where Bear McCreary recorded Rings of Power. Oh, so, indeed. How cool. How cool is so that? There's, there, there's lots of connections all, all over the place, and it's, it's, it's wonderful to see. Uh, so there's, there, there's just so much music. It's interesting that he's recording... This. All this Lord of the Rings music with all mm-hmm. the separations of instruments. So there's, it's just interesting how they're 
they're really recording it. I'm looking forward to uh, a full orchestration. So, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, check out the check out Bear McCreary soundtrack. And uh, I, you know, guys, I tell you this every week. I tell you this every week. Join our you Discord. Tell me every week. Join, Join our, our Discord. Discord. You sure do. Because you know, my, uh, we're, I'm not gonna oh I'm not gonna play yes. it here, but today on Discord we got a very very special video greeting specifically to the torn discord wow. uh, from morfith clark and <laughs> it's just a wonderful treasure shout out to xenos for commissioning it on cameo morfith has joined cameo in order to earn money that she's donating 100 percent to the palestinian gaza support so Thank you to all the fans that are already buying videos, and thank you to Xenos and the entire community in our Discord. So there's a nice little video. I was going to show it here, but I'm not going to because it's for Discord, and she addresses it to the Torn Discord. She knows about it, and she knows what is said in there. So uh, we have spies, and they have spies back at us, don't they, Cliff? That's true. That's so funny and delightful. Um, I believe it's specifically to get food aid to Rafa, I think, uh, for her, uh, the beneficiary of her cameos. Um, and uh, it's critical that there's food uh, for the little babies and the little ones and everybody. Um, all right. How so awesome. That's, that's most of the, that's that's all the news I have, huh? Cliff. Was there anything else you had before we jump well, in? No, I mean, I was, I was particularly surprised at the breaking of the silence. Uh, I mean, that was just top of mind. It was the breaking of the silence. Uh, you know, in addition to winning a little quick shout out for my dad, say happy birthday, dad. I love you, dad. And um, it's kind of cool that we have two voted rounds completed since the last time that we all got together and talked about the magical moments that has have comprised our new Middle Earth March Madness bracket. Instead of your favorite characters or your favorite physical locations in Middle Earth, we decided to go for your favorite moments of magic that demonstrate something magical happening there in the legendarium of J.R.R. Tolkien. And joining us now in our uh, esteemed gathering of Torn staffers, we have with us none other than Kathy Udoch Garthe Mao, who uh, is a travel consultant and travel agent and gets people to go visit Middle Earth in New Zealand all the time. And uh, I'll, she'll be with us at WonderCon this weekend. And hello there, Jim Wirt, also joining us, the, the masterful designer who's put together so many of these cool slides so we can see the little, you know, battles that are changing bracket by bracket between these different subjects, which people have been voting on over at our website at thewondering.net, which means, yeah, basically, you still can use your web browser and go over there and visit the actual website. No, you can find us on socials. But yes, come and do your voting for Mar Middle Earth March Madness at www.theonering.net. And welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Torn Tuesday. Thank you, thank you. Hi, guys. Um, um, real quick, I was just going to follow up with um, Colleen Duran. Booth number? Um, she's in Artist Alley. Yeah, she, booth number is B2 in the, um, the Artist Alley. So I plan on going to visit her because she's got like five or six panels throughout the weekend and so she's a busy very busy girl. i have a gift to give her i promised her some chocolate mushrooms she was making jokes on twitter about hobbity food and i said have you tried the chocolate dipped mushrooms they're really cookies it's a little delicious mm -hmm. sugar cookie that's been dipped in chocolate to make it look like a mushroom cap and she said no i must have some of those so my main mission <laughs> is to find colleen doran and bring her a few bags of the chocolate mushroom cookies they're delicious uh, yeah, I can't wait to give them to her. She, the look on her face is going to be so cute and so funny. So, Wonderful. anyways, just make sure you look up her schedule because she really is indeed, yeah. indeed. <laughs> and you know what? She's a superstar, and she's a, an Eisner Award winner. And right now, she's busy working on the Good Omens graphic novel adaptation that Neil Gaiman and Colleen managed to get fully funded on a crowdfunding that they got it way over the bounds of what they thought they were going to get. And this very you know, heightened but, interest in that. But you really want to know who superstars is everybody that's voting. And, and Jim, I believe you were telling me that voting <laughs> is increasing yeah. every round. Indeed yeah. it Can is. Can you guys hear me by the way? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
I, voting in the second round was up by 50 percent versus the first round and Ooh, it's good. looking like uh, our third round has already started and it looks like it is on the same pace or, or more um because we've already got nearly matching the first round just after less than 24 hours of voting in round three so yeah it's uh this is proving to be a, a popular topic and a, and a closely matched topic um, or, or theme around magical mm. events. Lots of people have lots of different points of view. And what's magic for some is not so much for others. Mm-hmm. And there are as I pointed out there. last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you well, did. <laughs> let, let, let's jump in and see if any of my unmagic moments actually made it into the magical sweet 16s. So, Justin, Mike, Mike so are you working on the uh, off of the PowerPoint? Yeah, I've got the PowerPoint. Good. So we Good. got the animated gifts. You did Excellent. wonderfully. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So this is just we don't have to spend a lot of time on this one. Uh, this is just the uh, the uh, the seatings all around, and this is the Hobbit region, um, and that's leading to the first matchup in the round of thirty-two, which mm-hmm. was uh, and we corrected this. Thank you to the fans that pointed out it's not Thrain's map; it's Thoror's map. So we've got Moon Runes versus <laughs> the Arkenstone was our first matchup that's getting us to our sweet 16 here. And the then and, and the winner of this is is the moon runes themselves. By 79%. I, I, I agree with that. Final. It is those things are magic. And it wasn't close. This this was one of those um, wow. pretty much a a runaway contest with 79% wow. of the vote going to moon runes. Yep. That's great. And it is a magical um, moment right at the exact point in time. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, we debated whether one of these was even magical. Because in the <laughs> rules of Middle Earth, a talking dragon is not magical. He just exists. Well, mm. but in the rules of Middle Earth, an elf isn't magical. They just exist. I, I agree. Let's but let's see what people <laughs> voted in as the uh, as the yeah. magic moment. Yeah. Are you and kidding me? It, it's mm-hmm. the conversation with wow. Smaug. Over the stone tro- over the trolls turning turning the stone with the magic yeah. of the wizard and the uh, uh, I don't agree. Maybe, was... Look, there's so many other <laughs> fantasy worlds where the dragons don't speak intelligently. They are not they're only beasts. Sometimes they're only just cattle you know oh let's just fly somewhere you know just um, you know there's a sentience given to smaug and that particular sentience is probably what is most magical about it because it really does represent bilbo's biggest challenge as a character he faced a lot of challenges that offered many opportunities for growth but nothing was more challenging than being having a battle of wits with an intelligent dragon there's something magical about that, I guess. You know? There's yeah. something... Well, in this contest, there's nothing magical about a battle of wits. It's just a battle of wits. Well, yeah, there's but... a lot going on with Smaug, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, you were overruled, Justin, so let's move on. <laughs> but, you know, this is... <laughs> By 64% of the fandom. It was a closer matchup, but so Smaug funny. ruled. By a, magical, yeah. a magical talking dragon that can talk when dragons usually don't talk. All right. That last time I I, 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 I <laughs> protested this Smaug Black Arrow thing, and you guys did a great job of, of correcting go. me and, and showing how arrow. the arrow was magic versus Prophesied. the last light mm-hmm. of Durin's Day, which I totally don't believe is magical. It's kind of like Stonehenge. It's just good engineering. Let's see what people <laughs> voted for. Oh, my gosh. I lose again. What is this? Good engineering. That's close. That's 54% on that vote. This, is, this yeah. is like when the that's sun close. and the moon hit Titus your eye like a pizza pie. I mean, that's... that. Yeah, that's but it had to be at exactly the right Which moment. means all the all the dragons are gone. Now, what was funny about the dragon um, is prior to the Hobbit movie and us finally seeing what um, Smog looked like, the... The dragon he was compared to was Vermithrax Pejorative, who was in the Dragon, dragon Slayer. Slayer. Yes. Um, yeah. And he never talked. 
He was just this evil thing that was always eating. I get you it. Know, compared to, compared to like other, uh, dra- uh, other dragons in other movies, yeah. But in the rules of Middle Earth, there's nothing special about a talking dragon. It's okay. not magic. It's how do just you know? Expected. How do you know? Show me the rule. Show me the rule. <laughs> uh, you guys are so funny. Because how many of the other dra- How many of the other dragons speak? All right. right. Well, well, look. Do you- the- do you Justin. guys agree? One of them, although you, one of them cast Do you spells. guys agree with Kaylin Griffin? Is is Stonehenge magical? Mm. Um, for many people, for many believers in the world, there is magic associated with that place. Yes. So, um, it's a matter of context and belief in a lot of these cases. And I'll look at this current case with the last light of the setting sun to shine upon the keyhole. That's a fulfillment of a prophecy. It's when a magical the, prophecy. When, when, the, the, when, the thrush, when the thrush is smashing his snail. With all I mean, these outside yeah, it, it, oh, like <laughs> moments, Justin's outside factors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I press go, the ahead, wrong go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. Well, you jumped ahead. I know. I pressed ahead. the wrong button. Hold on. Back go backwards. Go backwards. Yeah. Now, the thing, I'm just going to say, yeah, there's, there's a bird and uh, a on. position of clouds. There's a tilt of the earth. There is the f- rock formations that have to be all chipped and worn the right way. So that's magic. There's a that there's sense. a thrush knocking. It has to be at exactly the right time on Durin's day. Yep. Um, you have to be there at the right time. Yep. Um, it's in it's the right a hidden place. door without being there at the right time. Kind of like the door to the mines of Moria, which mm-hmm. is also coming up in the next region with a fellowship. So there's there is a lot of magical about the moment. And about I'm, the entrance, I'm not sold, but uh, this is why I don't win elections. But um, 54 percent ne- of the <laughs> fandom was sold. Uh, so yeah, this you... one is uh, the the <laughs> second round is Bayorn shapeshifts into a bear, very magical. Versus yeah. Bilbo finds a ring of invisibility. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Already cut. Yeah. I had a great gif for Bayorn turning into a bear, by the way. It would have been fantastic, but... Oh, wow. Um, well, Bayorn shapeshifting is as magic as it gets, folks. How can you how, how can you possibly vote for anything else other than a man transforming into a bear? That's some magic. And that's a rare magic in Middle-earth. And even Bayorn admits yep. that he is one of the last of his peoples. Yeah. So it's the diminishment of magic as the age of men approaches. Yes. Magic diminishes yeah. in Middle yes. Earth. That that's how I would have seen it, and that's. Yep. Yeah. First, you got it rid of that that pesky ring. Yeah. You got to get rid of that pesky. <laughs> it's ring. interesting. Um, t- Tolkien. <laughs> the question comes up: What kind of creature is Bayorn? And mm. Tolkien was pretty clear that it, he was a human. Uh, who happened to have this skin-changing, shape-shifting ability. Um, kind of embedded wow. in him, which is unusual because normally it's the elves who have that. Well, I'm an elf, and it, it, there's a magical, magicalness about them. Um, but then you get occasionally a human like Bayorn who can change into a bear. But and I don't, un- I don't understand how Bilbo finding a ring is any is magic. It's not. I think it's more it's... about. Well, you could argue that the circumstances, the ring. you know, that he would be there. You know, remember the pre the prelude to fellowship, and then something Sauron Unexpected. did not expect, or the one the yeah. ring did not expect to happen. Yeah. So, so he, you know, it was that it's a providential moment, and Bill can yes. turn invisible. Serendipity yes. is not magic. Turning into a bear is magic. That's my opinion. Let's see who won this How round. How about turning Are invisible? You... What? I'm, I'm zo- zero for three here. What is going on with people? <laughs> well, well. Uh, the, the ring appears. I, in I voted the other way on all three of them too. <laughs> the ring appears in several matchups, yeah. and uh, the question is: Can can the ring be defeated by any matchup, given the power of that ring? So this is mm. the first one that we're going to see it. Well, it might end up going up against itself. I mean, it sooner could. or later, the ring's going to go could. up against we, itself. It'll, it'll appear when Bilbo disappears at his birthday party. It's going to appear when it gets melted in Mount Doom. So this is not well, the last time we'll see the ring. The Animagus has been voted out of this year's competition. Do you guys <laughs> expect 
Uh, shapeshifters <laughs> in future movies or seasons of Rings of Power? I do. I very much do. And in fact, I would love to see yeah, the, the forerunners of ba- yeah, Bayard. The ancestors it would of be. Bayard. I would love to. See it would that. be a missed opportunity if they're not utilized in some story adaptation somewhere. I was kind of hoping those those guys with the big antler heads that we saw in the very <laughs> first shot of the first trailer of the teaser trailer of Rings of Power uh-huh. were, were going to be those those ancestors, maybe. I don't know. But it uh, turns out those characters had nothing to do. Uh, moving on. So there you go. There's uh, that's That wraps up the Hobbit region, which takes us to the Fellowship region. These are the okay. eight competitors for wow. the first round is back to the ring. Bilbo vanishes at his birthday party. That's kind of magic. And Mithromel stops a cave troll spear. Uh, only one mm. of these is magic, in my opinion. The other is just mm. good engineering. Again, great, uh, not <laughs> always, <laughs> great <laughs> material <laughs> engineering. So, so wh- where are we mining mithril these days? Uh, it's great engineering from... of a magical substance. Exactly. Yeah, when a Balrog meets an elf and then a lightning hits a tree, that's Amore. <laughs> <laughs> not not necessarily buying into that as canon, but at least we do know there is mithril. It is very light. It's just really really strong. And apparently, well, Lieutenant Charlie in in the chat room says uh, it looks like he voted for mithril. Male is more magic than Bilbo vanishing at the party. Let's see who won. Let's see. This correct. This is the I... correct answer according to me I... and only me. Oh my gosh, look at the tight win on this margin of win. Jim, this, oh, did this five happen? Votes. No, it, it won yeah. at the last moment by four oh my votes. Gosh. Oh my gosh. This is the, I cannot remember another Middle, uh, Middle Earth March Madness matchup that was this close right up until the end. Wow. So Mithril was leading and leading. The people were really liking Mithril. They were. Yeah. But at the wow. very last disappearing bilbo snatched it and it's the number one seed um in this region so our staff felt like disappearing bilbo at his party was the strongest of all of the entries in the fellowship region Mm -hmm. Uh, and it and it it lasted it snatched victory from the jaws of mithril i'm glad Um, that cecilia in the chat is making a good point I mean, Justin, you don't see the magic <laughs> in the one ring finding, literally finding Bilbo after being down in that cave for centuries, but you do believe in the magic that Bilbo makes use of the ring. I mean, come on. Yes. It's a sentient it's ring. A, it's, it's a sentient it is, ring. That pla- I mean, Gladiator was very clear. And it planning wanted to get out. and agendas and, and forthcoming. Was it serendipity? Was it serendipity or was it the ring drawing it him there? It abandoned Gollum. Because it wanted out and of the cave. And maybe it did draw it abandoned Bilbo Gollum. there. Hmm. Hmm. That gives it agency. Uh, uh, that uh, doesn't give it magic. Uh. <laughs> 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 All right, next. So the next matchup, uh, we're, we're back to magic doors that are hiding. I want the doors. I want the doors. Versus but I love the fireworks, fireworks too. Again, wow. I argued with you guys last week that Gandalf's fireworks is not magic. You know, I could go to Disneyland and see a drone fireworks show with a dragon. So th- there's nothing. But could you do that a thousand years ago? Could you have done that a thousand years ago before technology? Wow. Well, they don't. Okay. This isn't Star Wars. Okay. It's not a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Middle Earth. These just might be precursors to a future revelation. We, we we don't know what where, where in time we are compared to middle. Well, we Earth. know they don't have mechanicals. We know they don't have mechanicals. Well, maybe they're just buried. And, uh, but anyway, the fact that me, a human, <laughs> can see a dragon fly through the air in a fireworks show today, as we speak in 2024, makes it less magic for us in the show. So there's only one you know, magical well, answer here, and which, that's George Durant. It's actually a pretty fascinating point, Justin, because and Tolkien wrote about this in his letters in, when he talked about the nature of magic, some mm-hmm. of which was manipulative and others which were inherent. And the manipulative stuff, too, was he didn't say a one was better than the other, 
But the problem with the manipulative magic is it, it turns into what Saruman does. So Saruman creates gunpowder and blows up the walls of Elm's Deep. Mm. Similarly, Gandalf creates what, what looks like a drone, but we don't have drones. And so you get this giant flying dragon and Bilbo diving for cover, um, as you remember in the movie. And so is it magic? Is, it, is this an example where things that seem magic to us are really just advanced technology that we don't understand? Or is, is there really embedded magic in this stuff? So, And were the fireworks we just fireflies under a wizard's spell <laughs> encased in that little rocket tube? <laughs> That's the question. Well, and, 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 and if I remember correctly, most of what Gandalf's magic, at least in the first, most of the time, he was very subtle with his magic. Um, I mean, he, he didn't come right out with, I mean... You know what? Saruman was doing things like reaching out to Theoden through um, Worm Tongue and things like that, whereas Gandalf was a much more subtle magic user, except for when he was fighting the Balrog, at which point he kind of had to, you know, unleash himself. But he was always very subtle about his magic. Well, let's see how you know subtle what? Uh, he is with the voters. Quick... Yep, there it is. The doors of... Uh, Durin open to the password in Elvish Melon. for friend. But, you know, I'm okay. glad that Jim Wirt mentioned the letters. I have my copy right here next oh, to my microphone. Yeah. And it's, I'm just going to read to you, it's from letter 155. This is only the opening sentence. I'm afraid I've been far too casual about quote unquote magic, and yeah. especially the use of the word, though Galadriel and others show uh, by the criticism of the mortal use of the word, that the thought about it is not altogether casual. <laughs> it's he was not good casual letter. at all. Gotta read that. No, it not is. at all. It's it's um. It, it, I believe it's letter one fifty five. I think. If you're if you're liking this magical moments March Madness, you'll love that letter. Yes, Tolkien letter impacts. letter one five five. Well, and and I love um. T.D. Matthews um, says, following Eru's admonition that it was not to be used, magic, was not to be used to manipulate or overpower the wills of the creatures of Middle-earth. Right. Um, right. Yeah, so not to enslave anyone. Wait, um, you know, so um, yeah, over... T T Tolkien yeah. Is, is operating in the whole philosophical field of free will at this point, mm -hmm. which yes. is... What mm -hmm. frustrates me so much when people say, why didn't they just fly the ring on the eagles? Because that is so diametrically opposed to the entire storyline. And if you want to see an example of, of a wizard who caves to that kind of temptation, it's the whole story of Sauron. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's right. He, exactly. he lost yeah, he his way in guy. ways that Gandalf did not. Yeah. Nope. Oh yeah, he, he, he Kathy, he, your uh, your yeah, microphone's he, getting real oh. staticky. I, I don't know what just happened again. Uh, maybe. All right, I'll go to my try, sound. Try unplugging, replugging it back in. I will say this before we move on. Uh, uh, season two of Rings of Power allegedly, hint hint, is going to feature the creation of these oh, doors. Exactly. Right That'd be cool. Here. That'd exactly. be really cool. Why we didn't um, meet Narvi in season one of Rings of Power? Rumors are it's because of the whole recasting of Celebrimbor, and they but they actually filmed stuff that they had to cut. Anyway, moving on. Rumor has it. So there you Second go. Second round match three. Gandalf and the Balrog versus Galadriel. Galadriel's a really magical person, and she's in here again. She's one of those that's uh, represented in multiple magical moments. This is one of them, where uh, yes. her her ability yes. to read the minds and dig deeply. And, you know, so here's a little uh, a, a screen grab of Galadriel going up against Boromir, and Boromir's not liking it. Um, versus the classic Balrog battle, and the, I I am the wielder of the flame of Anor, keeper of the sacred fire. Um, and we talked about Gandalf last in the in the kickoff episode. We talked about his his ring, um, which is the ring of fire, um, Narya and like Johnny Cash? Uh, yeah, exactly. And Gandalf fell into that ring of fire. And he burned. Mm. Burned. Burned. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, Jim, you're I so love good. It. Uh, this is a, this is first, finally a, 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 a true battle of magic. Now, uh, Jim, if I understand, there are no ground rules for how to vote. No, it, the, the, no. The, there's nothing about which one is more magic. It's just magic moments. What speaks to you most? That's right. What? Yeah. So, and that's why I think the voting has been very broad. Uh, we've had very tight matchups. Uh, we've had a little bit of back and forth going on. Uh, we've had low seeds. That is things that the staff thought would not be nearly as powerful as others turn out to be very uh, popular among the fan base. So um, this is this has stirred a lot of points of view, this whole contest. Cliff, I believe you reported a f- several weeks ago, we haven't talked about Rings Power in a couple of months, uh, uh, when Gandalf says, I am the servant of the secret fire, the rumors are we might see the foundational secret fire in season two of Rings of Power. I'm really looking forward to it. I, I have, I mean, all the story about the leaks being as crazy as it was, the biggest piece of information is the idea that the opening chapter of the Silmarillion would show Iluvatar, the one, also known as Eru by the elves and he is you know when gandalf says the words i'm a servant of the secret fire he's making a reference to iluvatar and so if the showrunners of the rings of power uh do get access to the silmarillion you know on a piece by piece basis and they do get to show us the ainu lindale the music of the ainur then we will get to see the secret fire at the moment of creation where the universe is being created and the, the Valar and the Maiar themselves are even created first. I mean, first and foremost. Um, and it's an amazing creation story that is based on music. It's really an amazing story. It's and exactly. I'm so enthused, I'm enthused about this in the new, in the new show. It's really cool. Well, sh- can you guys hear me now? Yes, yeah, sound, we can. Sounds clean. We hear you just fine. Better. And Durin's Bane. Whoa. Yeah, this wins. Was, this was not close. Eighty-five yeah. percent. Holy cow! He's one of the higher higher margins of victory. Is yeah. Gandalf wielding the secret fire? No, but is he wielding the secret fire? He's the he's the keeper. He's the right. wielder of the flame of Anor. Oh, flame mm-hmm. of Arnor. Creates a dome. He creates a dome that the that, that the Balrog's sword can't can't penetrate. So he's he's ge- he's generating something. Yeah, and it it's it destroys the Balrog sword, which is why he has to go back to his whip. Yeah. And so there is so much magic going on. This is this the most loud magic in the entire story is this the most magic yeah so so justin you just put on the table you know the speculative thing we may get to at the end which is who's going all the way who's in the final four who do we think so so this may be one of them um this this is such a strong magical moment even though the staff ranked at six in the region (laughs) um this this scene has legs magically as they say, but it, because yeah. you know, this is you know the it's the it's the precursor, it's the fall down into the depths of Moria, it's the battle between the Balrog and and Orcrist, this um, this wonderful sword that Gandalf has found. Glamdring. Oh, sorry, Glamdring. Glamdring. Yeah, I keep switching those. <laughs> Glamdring, the uh, the sword of the High yes. King of um, uh, Gondolin, and so this whole battle and Gandalf's death. And later we're going to see his resurrection. It's all being set up by this scene. Well, it might have legs, but it sure don't have wings moving on. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> the mirror of Galadriel shows perilous visions versus yep. Gandalf. Wild water horses sweep Nazgul away. Both are magical. They are, and this is another. This is another Very Galadriel much. moment. Very much, wow. Um, you know, this is what this is what where the real Celtic and Northern European legends come to bear uh, in a more obvious way, with a water bowl being used to scry, and 
this is you know this is the kind of thing that has its story in its story roots in paganism and in ancient folklore from you know many of these countries and using a water basin to look into the future and to see visions of things is called to scry s-c-r-y and that's where we get the word from and it's a uh, it's just a very specific use that tolkien has here in the story um it's really really cool and this and this is water magic versus water magic <laughs> um as well pointed out daisy indeed. kim indeed. well um let's go down this panel who did you all vote for in this mirror i went with the mirror i, I went with the mirror also because it's so rooted in galadriel and her deep deep magic so the and horses what, cool. what bill but, or frodo sees and what Hor frodo sees and and how it makes him feel about decisions moving forward i like blunt force um, objects so i voted for the water <laughs> horses <laughs> <laughs> What's blunt force about water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you a, ever hit a fire hose, yeah. This is a tough choice. Yeah, this well. is a tough choice. It was. This is a close match. Cliff, you didn't give us your answer. My answer: I voted for the the mirror of Galadriel as because it's to me that represents old magic that I'm familiar with. Um, and it's such. It's like <laughs> it's on the it's the stuff of legends. It's the stuff of ancient folklore. So I dig yes. this. I, well, yeah. the chat agrees with you. Well, and 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 with the water and with the water um, horses, um, I, I, I gotta think Peter Beagle was influenced by Tolkien's description of this sequence, since he has the unicorns trapped in the water oh. that um, in the last oh, unicorn, yes. and when they come yes. charging out again That's and right. flood the the hillside, it's uh, you know it's it's like his homage to this amazing sequence, you know. And a, like, if you got to hide unicorns somewhere, putting them in the ocean, in the waves, is a great place to hide them. Oh, I just I just want to say thank you to Peter Jackson for putting this scene in the movies because I needed a balance in my life from my childhood trauma of the water defeating the good horse, Artax, <laughs> and how much that made oh, me cry. Yes. And to see the water defeat oh, the yes. bad guys for once... Mm -hmm. Was what I needed, and you guys voted on the water horses. Wow. Wow. Yes, it was. and it was close. Wow. If only fifty-six percent, so not that many wow. votes between them. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> what's, Look at what's you, high? Justin. You're so funny. This, this... I still th remember the poster that the ALA, the American Library Association, had a series of posters for reading. Yeah. And they did one with this image where they had just the, the, the black riders on the horses individually. And then they show an image of the artwork of the, um, the horses, the, the water horses. And then the, the, um, the, the, the whole scene in, in whole. And it was moving words create moving images. Right. Uh, and this is a moving image. Right. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, can you give some insight? Because anonymous girl in the chat room says, What? How did that yeah. win? Well, <laughs> uh, obviously it was a it was a a scene that many people really loved, and the fact that they added the flourish of the horses with the with the general magic of that the the protection of Rivendell, where the waters are going to rise if in case anybody uh, tried to attack, and so it did. But Gandalf added this extra flourish. Now it's rooted really in in deeper Tolkien stuff. So the, his whole Numenorian Atlantis fixation and the great wave, the, the yeah. dream that he had and that his son Michael had, he gave it to Faramir in the book mm -hmm. um, of the great wave that's overwhelming everything. So in some ways, this is just a microcosm of that same kind of a feel. Um, although, as Justin points out, it's a great wave that's doing good. It, honestly, you could say yeah. it was doing good in Numenor too, because mm -hmm. of the arrogance of the Numenorians as they were attacking the Valar yeah. at Sauron's temptation. But that's we're and not doing it, Silmarillion. Is it Elrond's yeah. ring? Is it Elrond's ring also based on yeah, water? Sure yeah. So wouldn't this have mm -hmm. been tied into to Elrond's yep. magic? Yep. So fi Ooh. fire, water, Ooh. and air. Yep. Yep. Oh. That's right, Vilya. Yep. You know, um, I will say a brief 
Poor Galadriel can't win mm-hmm. anything. But Galadriel's <laughs> down here. Yeah. I will say a brief word about the way um, that Ralph Bakshi had his team of animators do this exact scene where the waters of the Bruinen retract and withdraw because it's the, the water going further away. You see the bottom of the riverbed before the huge flood and the horses come over and wash the Nazgul away. It was really well done. Really well done. Yeah, totally. It, yeah, which is scientific based on tidal waves or, yep. you know, um, tsunamis. Yeah, exactly. Really cool magic. Uh, next up, that is the Fellowship of the that, Ring Round. Now we're that, up to two towers. Yeah. Round. We are now. Into the Yeehaw. two towers. This is how we got there. This is how the matchups were. And the results of our, our first round voting. Yep. That takes us to another Gandalf. Actually, two Gandalf moments. Um, ah, he's going his, against his each resurrection. Other. <laughs> well, you know, we, we frame this as, as shadow facts. It's really a shadow facts magic. Uh, that is, this is a <laughs> horse is unlike any horse ever or ever again. Um, with his yep. speed, with his durability, with his ability to stand up to Nazgul. Um, he's the Lord of the Maras, so he got his own magic moment. The rumors right. for season two, as we reported, of Rings of Power is we will see the beginnings of the Maris mm. and Shadow Fax's daddy. It's actually important to say a correction. Thank you, Otaku Senpai. That's a really important correction. Um, Elrond did not bear the Ring of Water. Ah, um, the ring, it, the ring of water, was actually Galadriel's Nenya. Um, it is Vilya, which has the sapphire, the blue sapphire stone. So people might automatically think, "Oh, Elrond had a bright blue sapphire in the ring Vilya, so therefore it's associated with water." But that's not actually. Um, Vilya uh, was. It says there is some speculation that the ring could control certain elements. Um, but you know, maybe it's likely, maybe, but uh, yeah, anyways, just to clarify the well, record, and didn't Sirdan which ring did Sirdan have for a while uh, before? Yeah, Kier- Nar- Kierdan. It- Kierdan had Narya, the, one that, the ring of that, fire, yeah, that Gandalf yeah. gets, which is the one that, that then went to Gandalf. Yeah, okay, did. all right, he did. that's right. All right, well, right. one of these is magic, and the other one is religious. Uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. What? How Funny. magic Gandalf the White re- returning re- from returning. the dead? He was dead. He resurrected. Yeah. Yeah. It is. He yeah. came oh, back. So, uh, no, he came back with far greater power than when he was Gandalf the Grey. It was. So he's a it new was person. Veiled. He is. A, he is a new reincarnated Saruman as he should have been. You know so. Even in the movies, I think they portrayed it correctly. And so you have Gandalf oh, against yeah. Saruman, and Saruman wins. And then Gandalf comes back, and it's like he's he's, you know, shooing a fly. Supercharged. Your uh, your staff is broken. Boom, and Saruman can't believe it. So it, it's not just that Gandalf is back; he's back in a big way. Did you guys yeah. agree with Peter Jackson's choice to just only briefly second guess the audience and use Christopher Lee's voice with, uh, with uh, uh, what's his name? I Lee? like that. I like Ian it. McKellen it said it was not Ian Christopher McKellen. Lee's voice. Oh, I remember seeing the interview on that. Well, really, you didn't yeah. think that was? We all thought that it was. I, a, a, I, I did. I yeah. think it was they Ian McKellen. Them doing his imitation of Christopher Lee. Oh, even better. Wow. That's even better. Yeah. Well, That's wh- even more uh, fun. Yeah. You know, I don't know what I would have voted for on this. I think I would have given it to Shadow Facts because who doesn't love horses? But let's see who won. And Daisy Daisy Kim says that it was in the book as well that 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 um, when they first see the white yeah. wizard they're not sure. Oh, no, they're not. And the voice comes out sounding yeah. because He's come back with the power that Saruman right. had and no right. longer does. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I was starting to lose it. Yeah, this was another right. not close matchup. I mean, we all love Shadow Facts. Yeah. But... That's, that's a big 86% vote on hey, that. Hey, why wow. does Legolas bend the knee right here? Um, Because he's in awe of, of 
of the person who was dead and is no longer dead. Legolas understands. Not something, bend the not knee something to else anybody. to do. Um, um, well, they, gosh, they do, when you, when they you do know the you're face to face with an angelic yeah. being, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Is, is yeah. Legolas the only one of the three of them that recognizes that Gandalf is a Maiar spirit? I mean, Presum let, let, yeah, let me just probably. ask the fandom in all the chat right now. Yeah. Do you yeah. think it's remotely possible? I know Gimli was not, but is it possible that Aragorn, son of Arathorn, could have had some in his in his mortal mind an awareness that Gandalf was from Valinor and was a Maiar, an angelic being? Do you think? Because that's just amazing to me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look at the chat. Here's some answers. Yes, yeah. probably yeah. he knows, but. I'm, I'm going to put forth, forth this theory to answer your question, Justin. I, I get the feeling that Legolas is the first one, maybe the only one of those three, to recognize that he's face to face with an, an angel, basically. You know? I, I think he probably especially senses an increased power. I mean, in the book, Gandalf says, There's no weapon you've got here that could even harm me. Yes, and, and later on he says, I, "I am the most dangerous person you have met, unless Dang. maybe you face Sauron himself." So Gandalf is aware. You got to believe that Aragorn, who grew up in Rivendell and got counseled and trained and mentored by Elrond, probably yeah. has a sense of what Maiar are, but of course, probably yeah. less of an intuition or a feel, almost like in the face of burning heat that Legolas would have when mm -hmm. this supercharged angelic being shows up wish I um, had who that is confidence. now well and of raised. course yeah. and of course legolas and and the elves would have known gandalf for many many lifetimes yes that so the humans wouldn't have experienced the length of time that he'd been around and so um even if if he didn't know that he was an a Maiar, it's like well he's been around forever <laughs> yeah yeah and it's well, true, having having been raised in Rivendell, Aragorn, as a little boy, was reading all of those things that are the Quenta Silmarillion. And he was reading the elves' history of the First Age and the history before the First Age and the light of the two trees. And I'm right. sure that he probably had tests in school to say how many names of the Valar and the Maiar he might have remembered as a kid learning them. It's probably very likely, maybe, yeah. Right. And you and everybody at home can relive this moment this Sunday, Easter right. Sunday, uh, <laughs> yeah. and join us at WonderCon yeah. as we discuss this and all other forms of resurrection. What what a better yes. better Sunday to do that? Gandalf yeah, is absolutely. casting. Great. <laughs> Gandalf is casting a big shadow on this entire March Madness, if you wow. appreciate, and, and in ways that Galadriel has now fallen. Oh, out dear. of the competition. Because he's magic and she's so, just a warrior. The the two no. biggest forces that are kind of at work in multiple regions right now are the One Ring <laughs> and Gandalf. Mm, and so okay. you, know, you, you can you can will resurrected Gandalf meet Balrog battling Gandalf somewhere in the And final wasn't war. Gandalf our first ever winner? I mean, we, at, at one point we stopped letting Gandalf and one other win because they won yeah, repeatedly. Yeah, we just took him out. I think Sam was one of the early winners too, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, according to this new matchup, uh, the Hithlion rope comes when it's called versus enraged ants that are unstoppable. Only one of these is magic to me, but you He's guys lying. had a good argument that the rope was pretty magic. I it remember magic. Kate Blanchett pronouncing it Heathline. Heathline. Yes. Yeah, I had a great gift for this too. Um, <laughs> there's only bet. one answer here, and of course, it's going to be the unstoppable ants. The ants. I mean, our staff gave this nearly a. It wasn't a quite the bottom seed, but man, the the fans are loving the ants. <laughs> Angry. It's it's an emotion. Yep. Sometimes you vote for emotion. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a vibe. To know that the trees could come to life and defend themselves against the encroachment of man. It is yeah. such yeah. a vibe. It is well, you really know, and it, it, so big. It's Back to the letters, Cliff, because I think mm. I was just reading again today. This, that was my Tolkien reading day thing. Um, oh, yes. And Tolkien said 
that the ants surprised him. They came out of nowhere. He, yeah. he had not envisioned writing about these trees, but what he really <laughs> loved about them was wow. how puny those those trees of Elsinore in in, in the Scottish play were. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So the fact that he found a way to make trees actually go to war pleased him to no end. And so the <laughs> oh, fact yeah. that uh, yes. we've got yes. you know trees enraged um, are huge. Well, and I love the fact that he had them be poetry poets yeah, as well. Yeah. I mean, it's just the entire culture of the trees was was so amazing. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So to the poetry, I'll show you. I I, I got a, a wedding ring redone by the Han the Jens Hansen Jewelers. So mm -hmm. they did the replica. Mm -hmm. or they did the one ring in the movie. But oops. My wife and I—you can't don't see. Lose it. your ring. Yeah, we we actually we didn't put the ring verse on it. We put oh, Treebeard's poem. Yes. About, Together, oh. I will, we will take the road that leads into the west, and far away she'll find a land where both our hearts may rest. And so yes. that's what's on my wedding band, in the shape oh, of a wow. ring. Oh wow! That's, that's how much I love Treebeard. Um, yes, so. that's the most beautiful thing ever. I yeah. I once yeah. officiated over a. 40th anniversary wedding anniversary um and the bride and groom who were celebrating 40 years together and in and, and complete happy matrimony believe it or not i let them read to each other from the poems and i gave her the ent wife stanzas and i gave him the ent stanzas and they read to each other and covered that exact line as well and it brought tears to her eyes when she read that to her husband of 40 years. It was beautiful. It was great. So great. Uh, awesome. And I feel like the, 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 the Howard Shore music when uh, of, of the March of the Ents is probably mm. my favorite piece of music in the entire trilogy. When, 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 Quick Be when, uh, when Treebeard uh, <laughs> sees the devastation... And the music starts swelling as he screams out and starts the March of the Ents. Uh, that music cue is just, still gives me goosebumps just thinking yeah. about it. In, in, in a movie, in a trilogy full of insanely great, divinely inspired, godlike music, these, the Ents music, is my favorite. Yep. Moving on. It's a good one. To Lembus sustains the fellowship versus Gandalf heals Theoden. Oh, Again, okay. I will say Another that Gandalf. only one of these is magic because we have power bars and we have power aid. We have <laughs> rations. We have MREs. We have, we, we have food that you can eat in space. We have calorie-dense food. Food. There's nothing magic about calorie dense food, but I'm afraid <laughs> a, I'm going to lose again. But in a pre Bronze Age fantasy ancient time, without the technology we have in the first world and making power bars and cliff bars, hello, um, come on, come on, <laughs> come on. Of, you had, to. had to. But <laughs> of course, there is magic to Lembus because. Look at the alternative. The alternative is that gross gl glog that the orcs make cram. Mary and Pippin drink. Or, That's your alternative. Or, or, or cram that the dwarves yeah. are used Or what to. they call or hard cram. Yeah, or hardtack. Hardtack. <laughs> hard tack. Which is basically dried bread or dried. That's what. I mean, yes, you got your, what, what is it, the Aussie made. biscuit or <laughs> the Anzac biscuit yes. was that. Well, and the other like thing. And, and, yeah, I think. Uh, T.D. Matthews mentioning it, that um, there, there is a power in Lembas when it's the only thing you eat. So it becomes more and more sustaining um, when it becomes the exclusive diet. So You know where I've heard that from? Spice melange turns your eyes blue and eventually <laughs> turns you into a space pilot. If space the only worm. thing you consume is spice... Yeah. You become uh -huh. a you can become a pilot and actually travel the uh, stars. A guild so, navigator. Time, yes, a guild navigator. There you go. <laughs> but I we digress. 
That's easy um, to do around all right. here. <laughs> Let's be honest. I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking Gandalf healed he, healing. Theodos. Yeah, that was probably the overwhelming vote. I'd be my guess. That's a powerful bit of magic. Yeah, and we talked. We talked at length last time about the differences in the movie version we versus did. the book version. Very that was different. a wonderful conversation. Maybe we should just post that clip on TikTok or something because I, I really liked how we got we dived into the the lore. Let's see who won this match up. Yes, of course. <laughs> Cliff, did you like that uh, particular shot? I did. I, th- I thought it was brilliant. I really thought it was brilliant, <laughs> even though when I saw it, the very first time I saw it, 23 years ago, or however long it was, I knew in my head, that's not what happened in the book, but boy, was that a big swing. I Imagine mean, if that's you a, had Twitter back then. Sw- you would have been hating this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would not have. No, I mean, look, yeah. it's like some of these changes are meant to be more cinematic. And, right. you know, look at the oeuvre of films that Peter Jackson was doing before he did this trilogy. Yeah. So yeah. he wants to go for like real visceral horror directing. He's always been in that mindset as a horror film director. Well, and when he wants yes. to go for visceral, exciting shots that are like exorcism written large that's a peter jacksonism and i think it works yeah. it works really. yeah and this and this scene it really did yeah yeah um, i've i've heard you know even a critic of of such an unbelievable filmmaker like martin sorsese in his mm-hmm. last work um being criticized around the point of show don't tell and this is jackson mm-hmm. showing that yep. scene you know, yeah. there is a sense of possession, and it is dramatic. Um, it, it is referential back to uh, the battle that Gandalf and Saruman have already had. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden, that power is becoming, wow, this is a new supercharged Gandalf at work here. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's. I, um, I think it's a great scene, even if it's not book, book accurate. But. And it also establishes uh, a relationship has been had between Orthanc and the person who resides in the Tower of Orthanc, and the person who resides in the Golden Hall. Feoden and Saruman know one another, and when you when the audience, who's not familiar with the book, watches the two towers, they put it together rather well, rather quickly, especially with uh, Wormtongue's sudden departure and going back to his real master in the Tower of Orthanc. It just makes visual and cinematic sense to do it this way. Brilliant. Cool. Yep. Pippin v. Pippin. <laughs> oh, dear. Really? Okay. This is round, this is match four. Here last, we go. Last match up in the, in the two towers region. Okay. I'm voting Palantir. Um, um, Why? Because the seeing stones are definitely magic, but I have a feeling Entrop's going to win because it's a great joke. But we mm. have seen stones. Right here, we all have seeing stones in our pocket. We can we can FaceTime each other. Do they take over the your day. brain? Do they take? Oh over yeah, your brain? yes yeah, they I've do. Oh, yeah. Looked at That's TikTok. Been, <laughs> have you been reading research lately? Yes, it's, yeah. this this can turn me evil. It can turn me good. It can put me in a bad <laughs> mood in a good mood. This. <laughs> so the fact that we have this technology takes the magic away from the Palantir. But if I drink the right water, I might feel taller, but I don't actually grow taller. The real magic is them actually growing taller. I would love, and so would the NBA, I would love a magical end draft that just made me tall. I'd love that. That'd be so great. And a lot of the sports leagues would love that too. It'd be great. Well, let's see what people voted for. Oh, that's right. The yes. true magic. <laughs> wow. And it yeah. won by less than 30 Less votes. than 30 votes. This was a back is this and forth con- battle. Wow. Is this considered wow. soft magic? The idea that a certain water from a certain stream can make you tall? Is that soft magic? Well, yeah, it's, it goes back it, to yeah. the stream in, in, in Mirkwood as well that, that, that put the bomber to sleep. So magic yeah. in water. Water is magic in, in many cultural mythologies. 
Yep. And so, so yeah, Cliff, you're yeah. onto it. And this is the two distinctions for Tolkien and magic. One magic, I guess you're calling it hard magic, is is magic through manipulation, through mm -hmm. chants or incantations, through an abracadabra. All of Harry Potter is that kind of magic. You know, I'm yeah. waving a wand or you got a, a jinx on you or whatever it is. Versus the inherent embedded, what you called soft magic. Yes. So if I'm going through Mirkwood and I happen to put my toe in the water, or if I'm going through the old forest in a similar way in the nature of, of Old Man Willow, or here, the nature of, you know, if you drink Ent Draft, you're going to grow like a very rapidly growing tree, even if you're a hobbit. So it's it's that embedded magic that wow. we're seeing in that, in that idea. I dig does, it. Does the chat room understand the difference when I say this stuff is magic and Lembus isn't? Like... This makes you grow tall. It, it does something that, like, nothing else can do. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't understand how, how the chat can uh, <laughs> cannot so understand this. Right. You are well, so that's right. funny, Justin. You are so funny. All right, dude. moving All right. on. That's hilarious. On. What's yeah. next? So that wraps, up, that wraps up the Two Towers region. We're on to our last one. Before we oh, get this is our last one, last two, region. Three. Last region. Eight. Okay, yeah. This, so we've got yeah. four winners out of this. Now, this, huh? By the way, this region just fell apart. Uh, the number two, three, and four that the staff chose for the seedings all dropped, all were beaten in the first round. So you can okay. see that yeah, we've got a, a seven versus a 15. We've got a five versus a 13. We've got a six versus a 14. How about if we just go straight in instead of giving all the spoilers up front? Yeah, you just give yeah. away all the spoilers. Oh no! No, no, that, that's excited. that's the that's the matchups that we're seeing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That was the last round. All right, uh, the yeah. first one: Which King falls to no man versus Baradir falls at the ring's dis di di dis discretion destruction destruction. <laughs> Both somebody's it's falling. falling here. Both of them are yeah. falling. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. The eye, exactly. the eye, or the Witch King. Both of them. In fact, number one and number two. We talked about last week. You guys did a good job convincing me how the Witch King dying is magic. And it's actually more magic as described in the book because uh, of much uh, more. the much dagger more. and the heel and everything like that versus the movie is just, I am a woman, hear me roar. Bang. Like, so, uh, yeah. I still vote you, for you, Sauron. You do but... get the briefest brief shot of Dominic Monaghan stabbing the back of you the do. leg and i was glad that they yeah, that. yeah 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 because he kneels edition. down so he's shorter yeah the, the witch king kneels down so that it's a lot easier for her to to take him out yeah is well it's also the of... barrow downs blade is is right. yeah. magic in it that's numenorian and it's unraveling the sinews of the witch king in the way that it was designed to do by by the northern kingdom of the of the faithful Numenorians. So that's mm -hmm. at work there. And, and, and that allows the finishing blow to be made by Eowyn. So it's a, it's a one, two punch. Yep. Did, I, I thought I remember hearing one of you book nerds say that the destruction of Baradir isn't really described like that in, in the books. And this was kind of a Peter Jackson kind of visual, creation the idea of it kind of like falling in on itself and collapsing in on itself so, i yeah i don't know not sure uh um who do you think won justin on this particular match well i mean aowen always wins <laughs> She's a popular wins. competitor in these March Madness things. Yeah, and I've got my shield and my sword, and yep, I, I've got the whole A1 thing there going. Go. There you go. Yeah. So she's so popular yeah. that the very first spin off movie in Lord of the Rings history will be That's her. She's narrating. Eowyn that great? telling the history of the shield maidens and the creation of Helm's Deep under Helm Hammerhand. That's Maybe everybody already knows this back to that Baradur falling scene. There is a really cool thing that when that eye explodes, mm -hmm. the ring script comes out from that explosion. And you can see it if you pause it at just the right moment. Really? You really? See, wow. Yes, you will see Didn't the know ring that. script come, come out from that exploding eye. Okay, All right, Jim, so like we have to go frame by frame. Thank you for blowing frame. my mind. <laughs> there you go. Get your 4K it's, it's, out and go you, frame by frame. 
4K will help. <laughs> I have never seen it before like yep. that. I must yep. look for that. I must look for that. Well, one of my favorite things about when Baradir falls is also the enslaved, like trolls and stuff like that, run off in the film. And I really love the fact that that a lot of them realized they were no longer under control and they could be free and leave. And that, yeah. I, I kind of really like that sequence. Yeah. All right, before moving on, one last question for the panel here and for the chat room. Yes or no? Have Rings of Power introduced the person being stabbed right here? Have we uh, met them? I don't want to know who you think. I want to know if we have met them in Rings of Power yet. I do think so. I think one, someone within season one of the Rings of Power is definitely going to be our future Witch King of Angmar. Hmm. Definitely. Okay. Interesting. I don't think so. I do think I don't it. Think so. I, I do think okay. it. Yep. And his name. Jim, do you have an opinion? Is, do you want to know I, who I, I think do, it is? I, I don't. Yeah, go on. Was, who do you think it is? I was hanging is? on what his name was from Cliff. <laughs> I think it's Theo. It's young Theo. Young Theo. Uh, that, I, did, I have seen that theory. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. The I've chat been... room is is with Kathy here. No, not sure. Maybe no. I, I don't think I'm, so. I am on the. You can put me on the bet the betting boards now in Las Vegas that I right. put my money down on fail. Well, maybe to be the maybe witch king. Waldrig survived. Maybe he's the uh, witch mm -hmm. king. Well, I'm betting that actually Theo's <laughs> mom. I mean, she's oh. the one Ooh. with with. Um, because of her her craft with with um, the herbs uh, herb lore and everything like that is is um, because the witch king is supposed to have been someone of power who had some sort of other innate power. So mm. you're a Bronwyn fan. That would be yeah. a so, new spin on I am no man. But and I and I would think that she that would do change it. it. <laughs> yeah. But 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 that she does it to protect Theo to keep him yeah. out of. Mm. Um, Tol the grasp Tol of, of Sauron. Tol Tolkien that's just leans my theory. towards black Numenorians as the ones yeah. who get, and by black he means fallen Numenorians Dark. who made their way yeah. um, fallen. into into Middle Earth. So maybe Earth we meet and... we meet them all next next season. Then when they go to yep, and Otaku Senpai is also saying that he'd prefer that the Witch King be of Numenorian descent. Yeah, right. That would be in alignment with. Tolkien saying that those spiritual fallen Numenorians were much more susceptible to Sauron's oh, yeah. whispers of power and things yeah. like that. And so, yeah. Yeah. So T.D. Matthews talking about Farazan himself and, you know, he is the exemplar of someone who we haven't seen it in the first season of someone who falls to the temptations of Sauron. Mm -hmm. Maybe so much Theo so just becomes the mouth. Maybe the Theo mouth becomes the mouth. Maybe Theo becomes the mouth. Yeah, mm. yeah, that, oh. that 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 that's interesting, and I like the that chat room saying uh, maybe it's just our Farazan himself, um, that mm. that becomes the Witch King. You know, not, uh, th since we're talking about it here, it, it kind of, it, I'm kind of emotionally uh, uh, in not. I don't want anything that the show does to affect this scene uh, too greatly. You know, yep. when someone said, uh, you know, the, the idea that this could be uh, Bronwyn and she is stabbing a woman right here. I think that changes this scene too much ah. and changes it from one of the reasons that a lot of people love and embrace this scene. And I hope that I hope that the TV show and the future movies don't don't go to such lengths just to subvert expectations on everything to change the meaning of things that we already love. Indeed. If that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah. The ring yeah. is back. <laughs> that pesky ring. That pesky ring. Oh, dear. I was, I I was encouraged. You know, in the movie, we see the, the dead tree sprouting a single flower and by Aragorn's wedding, it's kind of back in full bloom. Mm -hmm. The book uh, is a really important scene. Uh, Aragorn is really not willing to become king until he's found this new white tree sapling. 
and he finds it in an especially hallowed place on the mountains that surround Minas Tirith. Um, Mount so, Mindaluen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and this, and Daryl Sweet, this is from a, I don't know, a 70s, 80s calendar, uh, Tolkien <laughs> calendar. Uh, and, he, and he kind of captures this moment of discovery, and Gandalf has been the guide in the back, and Aragorn with this interesting feather cap is finding the tree. So, and so I was pleased to see a book um, moment get through to this round um, yeah, of the competition. Definitely. But it is going up against the One Ring. So, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, You guys did not sell me on the magic of this white tree blooming. It's just science. A tree blooms where it can. And nature and science have a way of just sprouting where it can only be sprouted. I am not sold on the magic of this. And in fact, I, my my disillusion of magic it was further reinforced by reading uh, just this weekend that uh, England, the United Kingdom, has more redwood trees growing in the ground oh, than yep. California, the home oh. of the redwoods. Because they supposedly during the Victorian age... Redwoods were so such a collector item, and people were enchanted. Yeah, uh, British Victorians were so enchanted with the giant trees and the giant bark that they all ordered seeds from California, and they all planted them all over England. And now there's five hundred thousand growing redwoods in England where there shouldn't be. So. That One just okay. reinforces so, that. That's cool. Well, that's great. Grow in there. Here you go. Seven stars and seven stones and one white tree. That's it. Yes. That yeah. magical inscription. And well, the, even in yeah, yeah, rings of power. Um, they they, they show they demonstrate that the, the, basically the tree shed its blooms when danger was going to happen to Numenor. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like the tree's a little bit sentient. Um, and just so that you know, um, Justin, there are three sequoia trees in Australia. Um, they've got a lodge down there called the Sequoia, and it was called that because the owner of this lovely mansion during gold rush time was up in San Francisco, saw the trees, thought they were amazing, brought some saplings home with him back down to Australia, and they planted these trees, and now they're 150 years old and giant as ever, um, Surrounded by eucalyptus. <laughs> so yeah, they, but that's they, they three tower. trees. So yeah. th that's proving my point here. See, yeah. Australia has three magic trees. <laughs> they do. They're lovely so, trees. You know, I just think this is just a mischievous elf or man that planted this tree. And, and, uh, uh, I'm sure it, it was planted like, there for a reason. It was planted there well, for a reason. It was a backup. I believe sure in the Bene Gesserit. I believe there's a Bene Gesserit <laughs> in Middle Earth. And uh, they just planned ahead. And they, they fomented this, the, the, this, this religious prophecy of seven <laughs> stars, one tree. So as it's far so as I'm funny. concerned, that picture right there is Lisan al-Gaib. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we need, we need to right. convert you into yes, a still lost guy, one. obviously. Yeah, lost one plant tree. Yes, there are a lot of eucalyptus in Southern California. They were brought in to be um, wind guards for the um, the orange groves here. Um, yes, and then everybody right. changes the names of cities and calls them Lake Forest, even though the lake was man-made and the forest was imported from Australia. Yeah. I'm not dead well, at all. We know what's going to win this one. There's only one piece of magic in this matchup, and that <laughs> is the magic ring itself. In fact... That's the original name of this entire franchise, isn't it? The Magic Ring? And it is magic to see how you can destroy a thing yep. through only one specific alchemical process. Yep. You, you, can't, you can't break it with an axe. You can't break it with a hammer. You mm. can't... Um, um, it, 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 it actually changes the entire persona and outlook and even physicality of the beings that it possesses. Yep. Um, that, uh, that ring, I, 
I appreciate the chat room saying uh, that the eagle dropped the seed. You know what? The eagles are the Bene Gesserit. They don't get involved. They won't take the ring to Mordor, but they, they will set involved, the though. whole prophecy Ooh, in so place that a halfling would discover no. it. I'm, 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 so I'm telling silly, you, dude. I've got Dune on my mind. And no you know how much the Bene Gesserit are specifically involved. They're not passive about things in that world, or that universe. You're so funny. Okay, well... <laughs> That's a big sixty nine percent vote. It, it was. It was. This isn't. This wasn't an eighty five percent victory. So yeah. the white mm-hmm. tree hung in there, but still, the win was was not in doubt. I would have voted for finding a white tree. Imagine any survivor of that species at all. I would have voted for that. But yeah. hello, off to the next round. Match three. Elven wow. ships sailing into the west, mm-hmm. leaving the bounds of the earth. Mm, indeed, I, not just uh, leaving, not just leaving the Grey Havens, but literally yeah. leaving the curvature of the Earth and taking the straight path to Valinor across just, a I, dimensional I, space I, and time. I'm just not answering this on my voting card. I have no like. like neither of these are magic. If one of you want to, wants to explain how each of these is magic, real quick, because I don't believe any of this is magic. Um, I do. Well. If the Earth is round and that ship is not going to sail around the Earth, but off towards Valinor and no longer be bounded by the round Middle Earth, it's magic. that's a little oh, floaty. That's, right. that's a little Peter floaty. It's Peter Pan's ship. It's Captain Hook's ship. Second star yeah. on the right, straight on till yep. morning. Mm. That's right. <laughs> I don't know, but okay. Although I don't know okay. about the Rohan thing. Um, what was magic about? The, I mean, I know that was it. Gone, bury, gone. Guided so them yeah, the, the Rohan guided showing them. up yep. has a. It's one of those providential moments. So you have yeah. Gonbury Gon showing up and finding them a secret path. Otherwise, the, Ro, the Rohirrim army would have been destroyed because Sauron and his minions weren't stupid. They left an army to prevent exactly what happened, or them, you know, riding all night at just the right moment uh, as the as the cock crows, the sun comes over the hill, and mm-hmm. just as the the, mm-hmm. the doors of Minas Tirith collapse and the Witch King the first time ever, not as it is in the movie, the first time any enemy has ever been able to enter Gondor. It's about to happen, and Gandalf is standing in front of him. And then, bam! Cock crows, Rohirrim crest, horns blow, and, and the sun appears. Changes. The sun yeah. comes over. the The wind has changed. So all of these elements are are all coming together just as the Rohirrim blow, and and Tolkien calls this one of the three most uh, personally emotionally moving moments out of his yep. entire book. Uh, was w- one of them was here? Yes, indeed. Well, yes, what indeed. did you guys vote for in this matchup then? It's true. Yeah. Everything that Jim said, notwithstanding, I still would have just voted for six. Yeah, I voted yeah, for the, Into the West. If, if nothing else, the, the brand new Weta sculpture is so stunning of, of this sequence. Oh my. Uh, yeah, of, of number six. And you were wrong. Whoa. Yes, all of you. Yes, wow. Wow. If this I remember poss- correctly, this was the most popular, this was the winning yeah. scene from a few years yeah. ago. It went up against the, yeah. the Eagles. The Eagles, or not the Eagles, the, the lighting of the beacon fires. Yeah. Those two, those were our our final two. Did you guys ago. agree that um, this scene's emotional impact was lessened because Peter Jackson put the elves at Helm's Deep in the second movie, so this scene became less impactful? No, I think this scene no. is fantastic. No, no. not at all. Speech scene. This is. Death, death. They're a little early on the death, death chant, but um, yeah, the the charge right into the ranks. The sun comes up, blinds it. Oh man, this is a yeah. During seven in the chat room says, "Is fate magic?" (laughs) Don't know. Good question. Is fate magic? Can fate bring you to circumstances and resources? that are so powerful and outside of your reckoning that you don't know what you're doing until you get there. And then the moment is thrust upon you and you have to make a moral choice. 
this is probably one of the main elements that fuels Tolkien's writing. I think. I so, and it's only a sixty-two percent win, so it's, it's a little closer. Yeah. But you're right. I don't. Fair. I don't know. Gone, Burry, Gone's um, guidance, and, and so that part's a book part. Um, and so the people, part of the people who who consider this to be a magical moment, it's because they're they're basing it on the book portion, because on the movie, it they just wrote. Is fate so, the invisible hand of Eru? Yeah, mm -hmm. Tolkien coined a word, and he he used it. He called it "you catastrophe," mm -hmm. and you see it everywhere. Indeed, you go, go to the Hobbit, and the fact that Bilbo manages to escape Smaug just in time, or he's in Mirkwood and all the rest of the doors are lost, and he uh, he simply manages to pick the right direction and go find them. And he's found the ring uh, back in the in in the Misty Mountains, or this scene uh, where the Rohirrim arrive just in time, just when it looks the most desperate, um, and and that happens over and over again, and and it's intentional. Uh, it, you see it in almost every, especially action movie. You know, oh, James yeah. Bond is about to be cut in two by Blofeld with a laser. And because of long exposition and some magical, you know, equipment, he, he is able to escape right at the last instant. So that moment of desperation that is met, and sometimes it's ham-fisted, it's done very poorly. But in other times, including <laughs> that destruction of the ring time, yeah. everything has been coming to this. And, and, well, and whether you call it magic or not, it is designed to be absolutely breathtaking and, and take your heart and say, yeah. I can't. And that's what I remember the first time I read the Lord of the Rings. That's why I envy anyone who's never read it or seen the movies for the first time being able to read it because it is yeah. an astonishment to see how this story that started all the way back when I was in the second grade with The Hobbit has come full circle. And now this is how the ring is destroyed. I, I could not believe it. It was that and, hard stuff. And, well, Karen, and your, love, your microphone's all staticky. We can't understand you again. You can't hear me? Yeah, try, well, just, try to reset it. You it sound like one of the adults in a Peanuts cartoon. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the only thing magic for me <laughs> Sorry. about this scene Sorry. is is the movie magic that makes my heart swell. Moving Good. on. Good. Uh, Last the matchup. Next round. Gandalf repels the flying Nazgul at Faramir's retreat versus the Shire is reborn through Galadriel's gift of soil to Sam. Once again, I would argue that only one of these is true magic and the other one mm -hmm. is just good no. science and engineering. What, nope. the, the soil is science and engineering? You, yeah, you, can, come on. you yeah. can get all the trees cut down in an entire country to regrow in a year. Yeah, come on. That's pretty dang good science. Yeah, that's, that's Galadriel magic. dirt right there. Yep, Imagine that's... growing five hundred thousand redwoods in England. That's magic. No, Can it's you only magic if they're all as tall as the ones in California. Yes, you're good. You can. Okay. Okay. Um, so real quick, I, I before my mic went crazy, I just was going to go back to that that what what Jim was talking about, and it's simply because in Galaxy Quest they did that. They poked fun at the fact that. They got to where the uh, red button was with the counting down and it was going to explode. And it was like at 15 and, and they kept pushing and the, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And then it stops, you know, when they get to like one second and she goes, oh, that's right. It always did that on the show. So, um, um, you know, it's one of those things that's so yes. much of a trope that you can make fun of it. Okay. So back onto this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last week I explained how uh, this is one of the most powerful uses of magic in fact it uh, the way peter jackson portrays it on screen probably even breaks the rules of eru these these wizards are not supposed to use their magic to influence things like this so this is uh this is a big rule breaker but it was magic to me watching this happen on screen and it was just like oh my gosh this is the scene after all of the movies Getting to this scene, when I first saw it, I was like, this is Lord of the Rings. This 
is it. You got flying dragons, you got men on horseback, you got life and death, the darkness and the light, and the white city versus the encroaching things of Mordor, and the white wizard using his white magic to dispel the darkness. This is everything to me. This encapsulates everything mm. in Lord of the Rings mm. to me, and this should win the whole competition. What do you guys think? Well, I think number 15, The Shire is Reborn. Because, um, well, and, and it's not my interpretation of it. It's why Tolkien put it in there. He put it in the thing. He would. He knew that the gardener, because he, he gave so much power to the Ents, and whether, well, of course, he obviously wrote The Scouring of the Shire, but by giving him a Malorn, because that's also a Malorn seed, so a Malorn yeah. grows in the Shire afterwards, and so this is an intentional gift by Galadriel, knowing that the garden people of the Shire will protect this. And it's sort of like, we're leaving Middle Earth, but we're leaving a Malorn seed and, you know, this, this soil that can help regenerate the whole Shire. And it's, it's just really powerful and as, as a gift for, for what Galadriel gives them. Something that will always remind them of of um, Lothlorien. So do you remember what Sam's temptation was when he had the ring? Mm -hmm. He's, he was tempted to be the world's greatest gardener. <laughs> I will take <laughs> over and I will make all of Mordor into a garden. And then a garden. <laughs> he, he realizes, yeah. wait a minute, I, I don't need all that. And his humility allows him to be one of the only three people who give the ring away voluntarily. And he gives it back to Frodo. And yep. this, this is the vindication of that humility. At the lowest point, they literally come back and Saruman has decimated the entire countryside. He has cut down every good and favorite tree, including the mm -hmm. party tree. And, mm -hmm. and Sam as the gardener and everyone else in the Shire looks at it and says, we can replant, but it is going to be the next generation and beyond who ever gets to see the Shire the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But because of Galadriel's gift and Sam's humility not to hoard it all for himself. Indeed. The entire yes. Shire blossoms in the space of a single year into, into mm -hmm. better than it ever was. And you get gold haired children, you get wonderful crops, the perfect batch of pipe weed, the best beer ever, a proper 1420. And it all comes true because of that. And it's in a scene that we don't even get to see because Jackson couldn't add yet another ending to the return of the king. <laughs> yeah. Just like we never, never saw ending. Bombadil. So, you know, these, <laughs> there are very magic moments that, are just available to us if we go. You guys are really attached to this. Very much so. It's a it's big part so of important. what is thematically important to the whole story. And I also agree with Otaku Senpai's observation that if you want to look at number seven of Gandalf using this brilliant flash of white, powerful magic to dispel the Nazgul that are hovering over, I mean, it's true because Gandalf the White was excused from some of his restrictions. Because in the books, in the mythology, the wizards are forbidden from showing power against power. And that's a moment in the movie which I think breaks the rules a little bit too much. Yeah. That Gandalf is showing direct power against direct power. Although it's yeah. cinematic and cool and you love it. Uh, all film going audiences love it. There's something powerful about the magic of the soil of Lothlorien that causes such incredible transformation over a devastated land. It's really something. Yeah. If there's well, one chapter let... you read, um, um, Justin, you should probably read Scouring of the Shires. It's the one chapter that, that was not in the book or in the movies, but it's the one chapter that basically, I mean, I love seeing all the, the, the little hobbits decide they're going to fight for their land against these giants. Mm -hmm. Well, I do love surf and turf tacos from Sharkies, but the winner oh, is. Gosh. Are you kidding? Me? Yay! Are you Wait, dead? hold on. There's How no way that? that this yes. one in the magic. Oh, yes, there there's is. no way. Yes. 
Oh, yeah. It did. Absolutely. It did. Remember, even Gandalf Faramir. is showing. <sighs> yes, Gandalf yeah. is showing. Gandalf's in a lot of other scenes. Don't worry. Gandalf ain't going nowhere. Because he's the most magic. Of course he's going to have a lot of scenes. <laughs> he's the most magic. He's just a gardener. Sam's but this just is magic a gardener. <laughs> yeah. He's the hero, man. He's the hero. <laughs> He's a gardener, and then he's the mayor. What are you doing? What, what is this? Isn't he a sheriff too? You voting for cops? Like, Sam, I love this, it. isn't it? No. Sam. <laughs> Sam is the Lord of the Rings Bilbo. He's yeah. the guy that went there and back again. He's the he's yep. the guy who's whole. Anonymous he, girl. He's a nepo that baby finally... that inherited all his wealth, and yeah. all of this power and magic was gifted to him. Oh, God. he's not magic. <laughs> so, so there's hope for us, is what you're saying. Maybe we can be gifted magic too. I love that Otaku. But see, this is I, I not mean, I love it. It anonymous. Sorry, she said. She said. Um, oh my gosh! It scrolled down. She said, "Finally, Galadriel got a win." Yeah, that's right. That is right. <laughs> that's true. That is right, anonymous girl. Big win. It's Finally. Galadriel. It's Galadriel's power. Yeah, because it's, it's not. It's not his power. It's just his humility. Mm hmm. Because it is Galadriel's gift, and it is obviously a Malorn seed. So, you know, yep. let's bring a Malorn. Yep. That makes what a great replacement for the party tree. There you go. Yeah, as you wish. Well, there you go. That takes us to our. That's it. What do we call it? Go back up one. Nope. You'll see yep. the sweet Elite side. eight. Back. Elite eight. Back. Yeah. No, nope. our Silivrin, which is Cinderin for sparkly, 16. So you see, Ooh, you see at least in, Deliverin 16. This is the right. current round that you can vote for at that's the right. one ring dot net. It's yep. the first. This is active site. now. That's right. This is active now. Uh, you can oh, vote. Wow. Uh, it, it is for so you things. can see the matchups. There are some now, big people can yeah, vote until and, tomorrow night or Thursday. Uh, this one's going through. Um, let's see the, the second. Yeah. Through um, what's today? The. 26. Not the second, yeah. So like the 28th, I think. Oh, yeah, the 20, wow. the, through the 29th, through the 29th. Look at some of these yeah. matchups, kids. Wow. So fun matchups, and it begs the question, guys, who, who's going Who's going to the final four? Who's going all the way? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Okay, so there's a ring. No ring. There's a ring. Well, there's it, a ring. Yeah. Okay. So there's a chance for ring versus ring over on yeah. the, the Fellowship and Return of the, the King side. But I yeah, don't the, want the, the only reason that does not have some form of the ring in it is two towers. That's yeah. Right. But it's got two Gandalfs. And the two Gandalfs could go against each other. Next round, the two Gandalfs could be going head to head. It sure yep. could. That's so gonna well, be so strange if that I, happens. I, I, I need that 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 I need that uh, uh, Malorn tree seed to, to to get obliterated. So uh, hopefully, uh, no, uh, hopefully no. that's uh, that that charge of the Rohirrim <laughs> uh, from Return of the King uh, can can do what it must be done. I Give think this is the, speech. I, I think in our sweet sixteen, these are the highest seeds or the lowest seeds we've ever seen. This yeah, far, 14 and in and this 15, case, they're going up, 13, up against one another. Two thirteens, a fourteen and a fifteen. Yep. Wow. Yep. All the number one seeds are still alive. Okay. So See, wow. Yep. Incredible. Yep. That says something about that. <laughs> Yep. Well, Sweet yep. 16, again, you can vote uh, for the next few days. Remember to share the link on your Facebook and uh, Instagram and Twitter uh, and whatever else. Uh, encourage your fellow Discord uh, friends uh, to vote. Uh, w you can stuff the ballot box all you want because the stakes are not the freedom of the free world. This is Middle Earth March Madness, and we want Magical more moment. votes every day. Every week, every time. So the most yeah. magical moment. Magical means whatever it means to you. Is it? <laughs> is these moments magical? Did it make you feel magical? Was it magical the way it came across on screen with the music and the visual effects and the emotion? Was it magical reading about it like that acorn thing, Malorn thing? Like <laughs> whatever the magic means to you. Is the qualification for magic? 
You're so funny, dude. And we want yes, indeed, everybody. Though. It's, yep. It's, everybody to vote. And it's the uh, a- appeal to your subjective self. Yes. Yeah. So, I, can we? I can see some of the uh, voting's already going on, and some of these races are tight again. So vote, vote, vote. <laughs> um, Justin, can we stay on a couple minutes afterwards so we can um, talk panel? Just for a couple yeah, of minutes. Yeah, I think. We- I think we can. So before, uh, well, let's go here. So before we let you go again, uh, everybody, we are we have to powwow about our panel this Sunday yes. at WonderCon. Uh, day single day tickets are still available at WonderCon. Uh, it's in Anaheim. It's across the street from Disneyland. It's going to be a yep. wonderful time. It's Easter Sunday, so uh, uh, bring some magic eggs. Uh, filled with <laughs> magic malorn and uh, uh, wear your uh, cosplay uh, and and marshmallow wonderful marshmallow tidbits to marshmallow <laughs> we got some little tidbits to to uh, talk about we will not be recording it or streaming it this is just for people that show up and um, and WonderCon is just a wonderful convention anyway uh, what uh, just a great artist alley way more artists than Comic Con it it really is. A, a place to support uh, illustrators and artists and independent businesses and stuff like that. There's no and big the panels, studio booths or anything like that. And, and the panels are a lot easier to get into because um, um, yep. you'll still have some big names and whatnot. And um, and the cosplay is off the charts. People really like to do the cosplay here. And if you go down to the fountain, I mean, if you don't have a ticket, although actually you can't get into the fountain because um, they have the security gate on the other side. Um, um, but you'll see tons of costumes because you can actually wander around where all the um, the food trucks are, and all the cosplayers will be out there too. Um, and it's just oh, yeah, a lot of really cool the, cosplayers. There's a lineup of like ten or twenty food trucks uh, in between the hotels mm-hmm. right there. It's they it's sure just are. a wonderful scene, and and uh, there's always a ton of great photographers taking great photos and videos of of your great hey. cosplays. And but hopefully hey, it bro. doesn't rain. Hopefully it doesn't rain. <laughs> <laughs> for for all you for all you East Coast people, hey, Dragon Con is coming up Labor Day. We've been known to have pretty good cosplay here too, and who knows? It may be yeah. the opening weekend for the Rings of Power, like they did okay. last year for uh, Wheel Two of years. Time. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, this is very true. And then, uh, so your final homework for this week again: uh, uh, join our Discord. Uh, join and, and then you can jump into the Rings of Power general channel where uh, some wonderful Discord folk uh, commissioned a cameo video from our our best friend Morfit Clark, the Galadriel of the age of the hour of the year of the next mm-hmm. decade, and she's so charming and she's so wonderful and she shouts out Torn Discord specifically. So it's just a wonderful tribute. Thank you, Xenos. Uh, for putting that together and and I also in Discord I haven't announced this yet in Discord so thanks for watching to the end but we've got some wonderful wonderful special guests coming up and I will be asking Discord for good questions for some of our upcoming guests we've got conversations about Tales of the Shire with uh, with some of the developers of the game that's coming up real soon. Uh, we just got confirmation that the cinematographer of Dune 2, Oscar winner Greg Frazier, a New Zealand Kiwi. He's the second New Zealand cinematographer to win the Oscar besides Andrew Lesney. So we're going to talk to him about the legacy of Andrew Lesney and all the comparisons between Dune 2 and the Two Towers and what that means. And then coming up next month, Viggo Mortensen will be returning for a wonderful fan conversation about his new Western film. Yes, Viggo is jumping back on horseback for another Western that he has written and directed, and we are happy to support him. So if you're in Discord, you get to give me the questions that we can prepare for all this wonderful content coming up. Look for Tales of the Shire (laughs) Real soon, from us and Nerd of the Rings and Cliff, go ahead and take yes. us out. This is going to be a very exciting time. And looking forward to seeing all you folks who happen to be with us at WonderCon. It'll be great. And yes, my dear Cecilia, 
uh, for those folks who can't attend, uh, I would like to write a summary and some photos and post a report after WonderCon to show you guys what was really cool and, and what was going on there so you can get a taste of the energy. So um, have a great Easter weekend, everybody who's going to be joining us. And uh, um, you guys are the best chat. Everybody from Facebook, YouTube, and Discord, and Instagram, everyone who's chatting with us, thank you for being part of this delightful Torn Tuesday. I'm very much looking forward to our next rounds of voting in March Madness. It's going to be super cool. Um, thank you guys for just everything. And, you know, special tip of the hat to Jim and Kathy for joining us. Thank you, Torn Staffers, okay. for being with us on an excellent program. And Jim, thanks for your extra miles of effort and hard work to make a great presentation for us about March Madness. Okay. It's super fun. Thank you for doing that with us. Now, we, we now really need to sign off. It's time to sign off and say goodbye, everybody. Be safe and be well. Take good care of one another. And as I always like to close the show with uh, the famous words of Mr. Moreau, good night and good luck. Or better yet, buenas noches y buena suerte. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs>